to be in the presence of God this morning. Welcome you all in the name of Lord and Savior who is risen this morning. Amen. Why don't you stand to your feet to worship our God in truth and in spirit this morning. God who made us worthy to stand in his presence, to call him above Father, to worship him in truth and in spirit. The ever living God who is in our midst this morning is ought to be worshipped. I want every one of you to close your eyes. Surrender before the throne of grace. The God who shed his blood on the cross, who died for us, and who is alive this morning, and who is living in us, who is guiding us every day. And he is doing everything that is good to us till this day. Who has been gracious in all our endeavors, in all the things that we have done, in all the ways of our life. Whether it was a mountain or a valley, God has been so faithful to us. He has led us this far and He will lead us till the end. What a great God we serve this morning. All that we can do is lift up the cup of salvation and to thank Jesus, the name above every name this morning is ought to be worshipped and give Him the praise due this morning. Hallelujah. He is Lord, He is Lord, He has risen from the dead and He is Lord, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is again he is Lord he is Lord he is Lord he has risen from the dead and he is Lord every knee shall from the dead and you're my Lord and my knees shall bow and my tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord you're my Lord you're my Lord you're my Lord you have risen from the dead
on the Calvary cross the word of God says he just gave up himself he uttered nothing through his mouth like a lamb that was taken to a slaughterhouse he just obeyed the will of God his father and he did everything for you and me the same God is alive this morning Heavenly Father we thank you for everything you done on the cross of Calvary, O oh Master. Thank you for the salvation. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that is within us, O oh Lord. Help us this day to worship you in truth and in spirit, O oh Master. Give you a word this morning. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Good to see you all this morning in the house of God. We'll sing a few songs. I am a new creation. No more in condemnation. Here in the grace of God we stand. Amen. Sing it together, worship Lord together. like this. God raised him from the dead, freeing, freeing him from the agony of death because it was impossible for death to keep hold of him. It was not the death was holding God. God was holding death in his hands. Amen. Because the God who is life and death is alive this morning. Just to make you live, he died on the cross. Amen. So we are going to sing this song, My Savior, Redeemer, 
lifted me from the mighty clay sing it together worship the lord says like this the spirit of him that raised jesus from the dead is living in you he who raised christ from the dead will also give you life to your mortal bodies through his spirit lives in you amen the same spirit that made christ to rise is living in you and me this morning amen so whatever may be the situation or things we pass through in this world Jesus was victorious when he was in this world and still is a god a victorious god reigning and ruling over all the earth he will do the same because the same spirit that raised Christ from death is living within you and me amen we'll sing this song lord i lift your name on high you came from heaven to earth just to save me lord he was the word says he just thought of you and me when he was on the cross amen if that god who can think about you and me 2000 years ago whether he will not do it today definitely 
the love of god is so pure and he is so faithful he is the unchanging jesus i want everyone of you to close your eyes just lift the cup of salvation thank god for everything that he has done and lift up his name this morning lord i lift your name on high lord i love to sing your praise i'm so glad you're in So glad you came to save
says all that we are we owe it all unto you but for your grace but for your goodness Lord but for what you have done on the cross of Calvary Lord it is impossible for for us ever to come before a holy God but Lord we thank you for the cross for what Christ has done and because of that we can come close draw close to the throne of grace and we can call God our father and what a wonderful privilege it is for us to worship you exalt your name knowing that you are very much present with us you are living in us and lord as the psalmist says since god is at my right hand i will never be shaken let's all say these words together the lord is at my right hand i will never be shaken thank you lord for such assurance and confidence that comes because of who you are and what you have done for each one of us that the weak say i am strong we pray for those who are not well let your strength be made perfect in their weakness we pray for our children that you will be their wisdom we pray for our nation lord that you are lord of all and lord over all we pray that you will reign and rule and let your kingdom come and let your will be done lord on earth as it is in heaven father we pray that you will continue to do your wonderful work of grace pray for everybody who's here those who are worshiping together with us online we declare the blessing of god to be upon them as we bring our offerings to you this morning we remember what you have already offered on the cross of calvary and 
we therefore we bring the first and the best and we offer it to you and ourselves as living sacrifice we thank you that you are our source and our security it's in jesus name god's people say amen, amen. let's confess god's words together this morning my god shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus let's personalize it my god will supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus as we sing this song let's worship the lord with our offerings and give god the glory god sent his son they call him jesus to be in the house of God this morning would you lift your hand and shout a big hallelujah. hallelujah turn around and greet at least a few people tell them God bless you on this resurrection Sunday may the Lord meet all your needs according to your glorious riches a very warm welcome to uh, anybody who's here for the first time we warmly welcome you there's a gift waiting for you uh, the welcome desk after the service is finished if uh, those who are worshiping together with us online we want to extend a very warm welcome to you and we pray the blessing of god to be upon you a few announcements this morning after the service is over in the evening we do have our youth service followed by the hindi service tomorrow being the 1st of april we will start the new month with uh, the promise prayer at 5 am in the morning followed by uh, throughout the week monday to friday morning 5 am we have a special time of prayer as we seek god and pray for our families our nation especially and also for our church and on midweek we do have our midweek service where we continue to study god's word and a wonderful week uh, that we can live for the glory and honor of his name and we request your prayers for me and my wife as we travel uh, 
uh, to UK uh, tomorrow uh, to share God's word in a um, global Tamil conference where lots of Tamil churches have come together and it's a wonderful opportunity but uh, we uh, request you to uphold us in your prayers and that God will be glorified and people will be blessed. Let's all pray as we come to God's word this morning. Father, we thank you for your awesome presence. We thank you that you are here with us. You are able to hear our prayers. Your eyes are upon us. Your very presence is with us. We don't come and worship a dead person, but we are here to worship a living God. And we remember the words of the song, He walks with me, He talks with me. And this morning we pray that you will speak to our hearts and Lord bring enlightenment to our understanding. Transform our lives for the glory of your name. It's in Jesus name God's people say, Amen. 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 God bless you as we study God's word. Psalm 34 verse 10 is what we have been studying throughout this particular um, few months of this year. Where the Bible says those who seek the Lord they lack no good thing. Every good and perfect uh, thing comes from God, the Father of lights, in whom there is no shifting or any shadow of change. How does God bring about His goodness into our lives? It is through salvation. And the past few weeks we have been looking from Philippians chapter 2, and I would encourage you to turn your Bibles there, how salvation was accomplished by Christ on the cross of Calvary, and uh, how He has done what only he can do on the cross for you and for me. And as a result of that, how once we were dead in our transgressions, we've been raised together with, uh, along with Christ and seated along with him. And what a wonderful blessing it is to know him as our Lord and as our personal Savior. Starting verse 9 up to verse 11 is what we are going to focus this morning. And the Bible says, for this reason also, God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. So that the name of Jesus, at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow of those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And that every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And here you will find how in verse 8, he humbled himself even to the point of death on the cross. And the last words were, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. On the third day, the Bible says, Christ was exalted. He was raised from the dead. And he was given the name that is above every name, to which every knee must bow and every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Say together with me that Jesus Christ is is Lord. So we need to ask this particular question, what does it mean to be Lord? And simple, you know, uh, understanding, it means he is the owner, it means he is the ruler, he, it means he is the sovereign head. But then again, there are so many lords and, uh, you know, as we use the expression in Tamil, you are very lord. Eh? And therefore, you know, since we are living in such a world, there are so many lords and so many gods then why Jesus Christ is the Lord? Why should we, you know, worship Him? Why does He have the name that is above every other name? What's wrong with other names? Do you have a problem with other names? You know, all these questions, you know, are valid questions. And therefore, we need to go back to scripture and find out why His name is, is name above every other name. Why He is the Lord? And why should we need to have a relationship with him in the world? You know, they, they ask this question, what's in a name? You know, and everything is in the name. And that is why people, you know, tend to change their names, hoping something will change. And some people think that if they change the spellings of their name, you know, at least something will happen in our life. And nowadays, the spelling we don't have a problem with. When some of us were going to school, spelling is very important. But now that we are living in you know, a texting world, you know, whatever you know, they say is what they say. You know, and, uh, and lots of short forms for words and spellings, you know, uh, it's going all over the place. 
But then again, why do we name, you know, why do we have to give a name? In the first service, we had a child dedication and they, they named the child Marvella Brinsi and they gave me the meaning for that name and uh, therefore it is marvelous and, and grace, gift of, gift from God or grace of God or to put it in short form, it is the marvelous grace of God and that is what they are going to call their daughter. From one, from one point of view, we name our child hoping that they will live up to the name that has been given to them. Is that not true? And therefore, you know, in India, especially in India, we are very particular. And, you know, when we were growing up, there were lots of Kumars and, you know, and all, lots of Kumars, Raj Kumar, Mahindra Kumar and all those things. But nowadays, uh, since Google has come, you know, we just say, give me the name that nobody has named. And it comes a big list, you know, and therefore we choose one name that nobody else has it. You know, and, and, and again, hoping that they will live up to their name. You know, in the West they have a white, black, green and blue and all those things. And in India also, Karupu Sami, Vella Sami, Nama Salachavaralala. You know, and we also give lots of names. Again, hoping, hoping, hoping that, you know, they will live up to their name. And when they don't live up to their name, you know, and people will say, Pair Matra Vachikonga. You know, and, uh, and the name does not have any association with how he lives his life. But when it comes to scripture, every name that God gives, he gives because there is a reason. He gives because the name itself is self-explanatory. It is connected to a person and the person does what his name says he will do and he can do. One example that we can all know is God is given a name by a mortal human being. You know, Abraham having experienced the wonderful uh, grace of God, the provision of God, he calls God Jehovah Jireh, which means, you know, my provider. You know, the literal meaning says, on the mountain, everything will be taken care of. And a few centuries down the line, on the Mount of Calvary, everything was taken care of. And now that we are living post-crucifixion and resurrection, we are in a place where we can say, everything concerning my life has already been taken care of. Amen. And that is why the Bible says, cast all your cares on him, because he care for, cares for you. One translation puts it across in this particular way, living carefree because of his care for our lives. How come you are so careless or carefree, you don't, you know, have any care about anything? No, no, I do have a lot of cares about a lot of things. But the Bible says, cast all your cares on Him, because only He can care for me. And that is why His name is very important. The Bible says He has been given a name that is above every name, to which every knee must bow and every tongue should confess. And that name is called Jesus. Let's all shout together this morning. His name is called Jesus. Jesus. And what does it mean? What does Jesus mean? It means that he will remove the sins of his people. And that is why I said, you know, the name is important. And the name's meaning is important. And it is connected to a person. And he has done what his name says. His name means he will remove his sins, the sins of his people. And come with me to another passage of scripture. I'm going to read uh, the, the passage for you, but I want you to follow it up in your Bibles. Ephesians chapter 1, then he has been given a name above every other name. What does it get connected to? Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18 onwards, and Paul prays, and this is a prayer, but it is full, filled with what kind of God we worship and how important is his name. Verse 18, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened, so that you will know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of, his, of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the surpassing greatness of his power towards us who believe. These are in accordance with the working of the strength of his might, which he brought about in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, 
but also in the one to come and he put all things in subjection under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church which is his body the fullness of him who fills all in all and let me encourage you this is a very very powerful passage of scripture and a whole load of things you know paul mentions about what christ does done and the key aspects for us to get to hold of this morning is this he raised him from the dead and he seated him in the heavenly realms everything is subjected unto his feet and his name is above every other name both in this age and in the age to come and he is the head of the church and he fills all things with himself and his name is called jesus christ let's all say his name together his name is called jesus christ and therefore it is so important for us to understand when we mention the name of jesus it is so powerful that we need to understand what he has done what he is going to do in our lives and what he is already doing in each one of our lives many a times it has become so familiar and many times in the in the western culture you know his name has been substituted for swearing and so on and so forth and that is why even before many many hundreds of years ago the bible says do not you know use the name of the lord in vain and it is a command because people re- fail to understand what he has done for them and that is why they are so flippant when it comes to the using of that particular name but let me encourage you this morning we have an awesome privilege and a wonderful relationship with him when we mention the name of jesus to use the expression it speaks volumes to us because he has done so much into our lives that his name means so much to me if that is you would you lift your hand and say a big amen come with me to ephesians uh, acts chapter 4 and verse 12 the uh, acts of the apostle chapter 4 and verse 12 the bible says and there is salvation in no one else for there is no other name under heaven that has been given among men by which we must be saved you know again peter is preaching and in his preaching he says these particular words there is no other name that has been given under heaven above the earth except the name of jesus by which man can be saved and again we are living in a very pluralistic society and therefore they will say no why should you have the monopoly why should jesus be the only name you know that, uh, that through which man can be saved we have lots of other names and even that can bring about salvation mukti or whatever that might be but the bible says only the name of jesus then again they would argue if uh, the bible says and if you believe in the bible that is for you and therefore you show you should not kind of you know force us to believe we understand all those things but then again you know it is not a mere name it is connected to a person and when you understand and experience what that person has done and only what he can do in a person's life then you will be able to understand that there is no other name except the name of jesus by which man can be saved this is not something to be argued but rather this is something to be experienced and therefore when you experience something again to use the expression nobody can argue with an experience and then again that is what the bible says taste and see that the lord is good why is, why should that name the name of jesus again what it means the bible says he will remove the sins of his people acts chapter 2 and verse 21 peter again preaching the first ever gospel preaching in the after the resurrection and the ascension of the lord acts chapter 2 and verse 21 the bible says and it shall be that everyone who calls on the name of the lord shall be saved it is a quotation from from the prophet joel and he says in the last days i will pour out my spirit upon all flesh your sons and your daughters they will prophesy your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams your maid servants and your female servants they will all prophesy and anyone who calls on the name of the lord shall be saved again what is in a name 
you know it is not just a mere name it is connected to a person and his name is jesus and only he can save why is that very important again the whoever calls on the name of the lord shall be saved is it just merely some kind of a formula that just you, when you call the name then everything automatically happens no to call on the name is something to begin with but there is something much more attached to it he is a person therefore let me put it across in this particular way not only just merely merely knowing the name but having a relationship with the one who has that name will lead you to experience what he has done for you in your own life let me illustrate and we will be able to understand say for example if i if i mention a name then you might be able to respond in this particular way for example i think i've heard that name somewhere engiyo ketta mari irukiradu you know and uh, on this after some you know some thoughts then you say i i think i know him i have met him and uh, the further the further the conversation goes you know i think i know him when did you see him uh, 25 years ago okay you you know the name it rings a bell they say and after some time i can even imagine his face and the next question is you know when did you last speak with him as i told you it was long time ago 25 years ago okay keep that in mind and let me continue the conversation jesus ingyu ketta marke you know and yeah certainly it rings a bell certainly it rings a bell in the money i i i, I hope you are able to understand certainly it rings a bell and uh, when was the last time you spoke to him about uh, 20 years ago what is your name yesudas <laughs> i hope you are able to understand so there are lots of christian people you know matthew mark luke and john why should we name our children matthew luke and john let's also name the acts of the apostles and ephesians and romans i hope you are able to follow lots of christian names but having a name in one sense at least we are thankful that we have some kind of biblical heritage some kind of christian flavor to that but then again when it comes to christ it's not merely knowing the name though knowing the name in itself it's a blessing but you need to move a bit more further and have a relationship with the person who has that name it's only then salvation that was accomplished on the cross of calvary becomes your personal experience Amen. and that is why the bible says know the truth and the truth will set you free what kind of knowing does the bible talk about it's not just merely knowledge but revelation knowledge that leads to relational experience in a person's life and the bible says anyone who calls on the name of the lord shall be saved and i have come across you know people relating their experience people who are on their death bed and they do not know uh, no christ they haven't responded previously in their life but in their dying moments you know if they have a christian uh, relative or somebody they will tell them uh, at least say yesu adha mathra sonna bodham you know you will be all right and uh, and if it comes to that that he says that word what joy that person experience you know the relative he says the final words that came out of his mouth was jesus and i'm sure anyone who calls on the name of the lord shall be saved that is all right for that particular person but you and i you know we know the name we know the uh, the person who to whom this particular name belongs and our challenge this morning is to have a closer relationship with the risen savior so that we will be able to experience all that he has accomplished for each one of us on the cross of calvary that is the challenge this morning and therefore the bible says anyone who calls on the name of the lord shall be saved why should we call on his name and again going back to the same basic foundation what does his name mean his name means he shall remove the sins of his people if he only he can remove the sins of his people then there is no other name except to call on that name who can remove the sins of his people 
Come with me to Romans chapter 10 and verse 9 and verse 10. Again, powerful verses of scripture. And look at how Paul puts it across. Why we need to confess that name. Why this name is very important. Why it needs to be in our heart. Why it has to be in our mouth. And how come salvation becomes a person's experience. Romans chapter 10 verse 9 and verse 10. And that if you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. How does a person get saved? You know, confession of sin is very important. It's very part and vital part, confessing our sin. But merely confessing our sin is just one part of it, but it is not complete in itself. And if you follow my logic, if I confess my sins, I am only confirming that I am a sinner. Even without me confessing my sin, everybody knows I am a sinner. I hope you are able to follow my logic. So when I, when I say, Lord, for, you know, I am a sinner, I am taking responsibility for my sins and I am confessing that I am a sinner. But confessing you as a sinner only confirms that you are a sinner but it does nothing about the sinful condition that you find yourself in. And that is why Paul says, we need to confess Him. We need to confess Jesus Christ with our mouth. Why should we, I have to confess Jesus Christ with my mouth? Because it is He who has atoned for my sin. And as long as I am keeping confessing my sin, I am confirming my sinfulness, the moment I began to confess Him who has shed His blood on the cross of Calvary and who has offered Himself as a sacrifice and atoned for my sin, then I, when I confess Him, I am not only confessing about my sin, but I am also confessing about what He has done for my sin. And what, he, what has He done for my sin? The Bible says, as far as east is from the west, so far has he removed all my transgressions from me. If you are with me, lift your hand and say a big amen to that. Without shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. And not just any blood, but the Bible says the blame, spotless, you know, blameless blood of Christ was shed on the cross of Calvary. As a result of that, you know, the Bible says our sins have been purged. Our sins have been atoned for and therefore I need to confess Him who has atoned for my sin. Let me approach it from another angle. If you don't believe that Christ died for your sin, then you will die in your sin. I am going to say it again for you. If you don't believe that Christ died for your sin, then you will die in your sin. But same, same logic again. When I believe that he died for my sin, not only dying for my sin, but he rose again from the dead. And therefore, as he says, as I live, you shall live also. Say together with me, as he lives, I shall live also. And what is the kind of life that he lives? The Bible says, we have a high priest who is able to sympathize with our weakness. He was tempted on all accounts, yet without sin. Such is the high priest that we have. Therefore, we can boldly approach the throne of confidence to receive help, to receive grace and mercy in time of need. The Bible says not only confessing uh, uh, Christ with our mouth, but the Bible says believing in our heart that the Father has raised him from the dead. You know, living in the 21st century, where artificial intelligence is there, science and technology has improved, medical field has improved, and so on and so forth. How, you know, death uh, and raised, being raised up from the dead, it all seems... Uh, some people think like that, you know. But again, we need to go back to scripture. You know, the Bible is very, very powerful, you know, and it brings godly wisdom. Why is... Christ raised from the dead, very important. You know, why it is so important? Because every man who is born needs to die one day. And why Christ raised from the dead is very important. Very important for you and for me this morning, but very important for everybody, you know, for, for them to understand. 
let me let me let me take it from scripture and i pray god will help us to understand the bible says the wages of sin is death say together with me the wages of sin is death therefore when christ died on the cross of calvary and the bible says the wages of sin is death and christ died what will be the conclusion i hope you are thinking along with me probably some of you 40 days non no non veg and we have already already ordered bucket biryani and pastor please you know hurry up with your sermon get him crucified get him buried get him raised up you know no 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 meduva da moon naal kalichidam i hope you are able, i hope you are able to follow what i'm saying you know he died on the cross and the bible says the wages of sin is death when he died what is the cause oh just follow the follow the principle wages of sin is death everybody sinned everybody dies jesus also died therefore how can we conclude he must have also sinned and that is why he died and people might have come to the conclusion when he died or we thought he was something very special we thought he was something very extraordinary we thought he was something very supernatural uh, he died like just like the rest of us but uh, only that he died a very gruesome death and uh, theologically speaking people will come to a conclusion as i said the wages of sin is death jesus died therefore sin is the cause he must have sinned therefore the ultimate end of that is he died therefore it doesn't make any difference between me and and him but we need to understand two days later you know on the third day the bible says jesus rose from the dead the bible also says the father raised him from the dead the bible also says the spirit who raised him from the dead is now living inside of you why is the resurrection very important if sin is the cause of death and jesus died and rose again defying death or overcoming death it simply and clearly makes us understand he has dealt with sin and that is why the end of the the wages of sin which is death was overcome by christ because sin was already dealt with and that is why it is important that he rose again from the dead Amen. i hope you are able to follow i i i i i try to rephrase that ena enake therpti illa sonnadu i am i'm going to say it again for you you know you know he he rose again what was the death uh, the reason for death sin without dealing with the reason for death you cannot raise from the dead i hope you are able to understand and when he rose from the dead it clearly shows that he has dealt with the reason of death the outcome of sin and having been raised from the dead it proves that sin was atoned for death has been overcome law has been fulfilled and the one who was who had the authority of death the devil you know uh, taking people at his vision uh, fancy you know he has been crushed but on the third day he rose victorious amen. if you are with me say a big game man to that let me put it in another way you know it was shared by a very very power, wonderful preacher and he uses his wonderful illustration why jesus being raised from the dead is very important you know and he says i have come to the cross roads of life there are lots of options should i take this path should i take that path and so on and so forth and you know i i was confused i did not know which way to take in my life then i remembered you know a very powerful philosopher and i wanted to consult him but he was dead long time ago then i remembered another philosopher and he was also dead and i remembered a lot of people and all those people were dead and at the junction you know at the crossroads of my life there was only one person who was alive and i asked him which way should i take and he said i am the way hallelujah i am the truth 
and I am the life. No man can come to the Father except through me. Not only is he the way, he is also the resurrection and life. And therefore, we don't consult dead people for, for, for us to make decisions. We consult with him who is living in us, who is living with us. And who has done everything that needs to be done for us. That is why we sing, he talks with me. He walks with me. I serve a risen savior. Amen. Lift your hand and shout a big hallelujah. hallelujah. And why is, why is Christ raised from the dead is very important. Because one day we are all going to die. But don't get morbid at the moment. But you know, but think along with me. You know, Paul says for me to live is Christ and for me to die is gain. But nobody in their rightful mind will say death is, you know, a gain. Because every home that is represented here has seen one of our loved ones, you know, being passed away. If you believe in God, they have been promoted to heaven. And it is always seems to be a loss. But then again, you know, if you know Christ Jesus as your personal savior, and you know that he not only died, he also rose again from the dead, and he now lives in you, and you not only know his name, but you have a relationship with the one who has that name. Now you can say, as Paul says, for me to live is Christ, and for me to die is again. I have simplified that and made it and put it across in this particular way. To live is Christ, you know, let me say in this way. When I am alive in this world, He is with me. When we are not in this world, we are with Him. Amen. I hope you are able to understand. If, I am, if we are here, where is He? Oh, come on, I am asking you. If you are here, where is Jesus? He is with you. If you are not going to be here, meaning, meaning, one fine day, you know, we have to meet with Him. If not here, we will be there. So, either here or there, it is always, we are in an advantageous position. Because of Him who died and who rose again. Now we can look at death. Yes, it is painful. Yes, it is grievous. Yes, it is hard. Yes, it is very difficult to digest. But then again, we have our Savior who is called Jesus Christ, who not only dealt with our sin on the cross of Calvary, but he died and he rose again and now he lives forever and ever and ever. When I am here, he is with me. When I am not here, I am with him. Therefore, to live is Christ and to die is again. If you are with me, lift up your hand and shout a big amen to that. You know, I heard this story written, um, uh, written concerning you know, Spurgeon and his church and the, the uh, elders, they came to him and they apparently said it in this way. Our people are dying well. Our people are dying well. What do you mean by our people are dying well? By, what they mean by that is this. They know where they are going and therefore they are looking forward in a sense. Of course, all the other things are, are, are involved. We are not minimizing that. But they know the truth. They know that they serve a God who has died and rose again for them. And that is why, you know, though humanly speaking, there are so much of mixed emotions, but from a spiritual point of view, they know where they are going. If you are with me, lift your hand and say a big amen to that. There was another example of that I came across about this guy, you know, in England. That his friends and his relatives, are, they are not Christians. They haven't accepted the gospel and he was almost dying. And, uh, uh, you know, he wrote a letter to all his friends and this was the title of his, uh, of his uh, content of his letter. Come and see how a Christian dies. Come and see how a Christian dies. Pastor, uh, today is the resurrection. You are constantly talking about uh, death. <laughs> but you can't be raised again if you are not. I, I hope you are able to follow my logic. You know, come and see how a Christian dies. Again, the truth is, you know, everybody dies and everybody has their own philosophy. But when you come to Christian a person, 
he knows the one who has died and who has come back to life he did it not to you know he did it for me and therefore you know i can look to him even in the most darkest of hours there is plenty of light that shines from the face of christ that brightens our heart if you are with me say a big amen to and that is why resurrection is very important you know that is why christ dying on the cross is very important how can he overcome death the bible says he died and through his death he overcame death and the one who holds the keys to death when you come to the book of revelation the bible says i died now i live forever more i hold the keys of death and hades and the implication of that particular verse of scripture is this our on the life and the final say of our life is not with anybody but it is in the hand of god it is safe in the hand of god and therefore we can have confidence this morning that christ is our savior that he died and he rose again and he lives forevermore and that is why we need to open our mouth and confess him as our lord and as our savior he is lord of all you know and he is lord of all our aspects of our life when we are here on earth he is with you when we are there with him we will always be with him you know some people have this strange and funny ideas you know i have, uh, probably they get it from somewhere and uh, you know they say some person you know passes away and uh, for the next 40 days he will be around here somewhere you know and, uh, and probably they got the idea from you know christ only ascended on you know the the 40th day and therefore probably probably they have that idea and therefore they say 40 days they will be around here somewhere and on the 40th day prayer meeting you know we need to cook what they like so that they were their atma will find shanti i hope you are able to follow what i am saying if you are very sentimental please forgive me but then again you know we have to think about it you know adha marithavargal shanti adaivadarku ivargal saapida vendum i hope you are able to follow you know and people have that idea so on the 40th day they have this prayer meeting and all that and then i hope i hope you know their soul is at rest let me encourage you this morning you know to be absent here is to be present with the lord say together with me to be absent here is to be present with the lord there is no time gap you know somebody said it in this uh, this particular way you know the last breath on earth here the next moment will be your first breath in heaven because he is with you through and through i like this particular expression you know i will come and i will take you so that you will be with me forever have you come across that particular verse of scripture ungal irudhiyam kalangad irpadagi where i am you shall be also i will come and i will take you the ultimate fulfillment comes when jesus comes with all his angels and the holy ones he will come and he will take us in the twinkling of an eye we shall be transformed and we shall be with him forever and ever that is the ultimate fulfillment but the principle still stands and it's still very valid when we can say even every person who believes in jesus christ who knows him as their personal savior who has lived by putting their faith in them when their last moments come he comes who has already been with them for throughout their lifetime he says i will come and i will take you so that you can be with me forever and ever such is the care that our savior shows towards you and towards me therefore if you are you know worried about or filled with anxiety concerning you know again this particular verse of scripture it says and let me say that in tamil ஜீவகாலம் எல்லாம் மரண பயத்தில் அடிமைப்பட்டிருக்கிறவர்களை விடுதலையாக்கும் படிக்கு அப்படியானார் த்ரூ அவுட் தேர் லைஃப் தே ஆர் லிவிங் பட் தே ஹாவ் திஸ் ஃபியர் ஆஃப் டெத் ஆல்வேஸ் ஹேங்கிங் ஓவர் தெம் அண்ட் ஜீசஸ் எஸ் டோன்ட் வரி யூனோ அண்ட் சின்ஸ் சில்ட்ரன் ஆர் ஃப்ளஷ் அண்ட் பிளட் ஹீ ஆல்சோ பிகேம் ஃப்ளஷ் அண்ட் பிளட் ஹீ டைட் அண்ட் ஹீ ரோஸ் அகேன் அண்ட் நவ் ஹீ டெல்ஸ் மீ அண்ட் ஹீ டெல்ஸ் யூ டோன்ட் வரி அபவுட் தட் என வென் இட் கம்ஸ் i will be there with you 
you know, he's already here with us. Now I don't want you to think about all death and all those things. Why am I mentioning all these things? Because we have a Savior who died and also who rose again. And he has come to the English service this morning. Before 9 o'clock, by the way. I hope you are able to follow. Are, are, you, are you there? And it is so important for us to understand. Come, let me give you a few verses of scripture which are very, very powerful. Acts chapter 10 verse 43 why him dying on the cross and him being raised up again from the dead because sin is the cause of death sin has been dealt with death has been overcome he lives forevermore his name is called Jesus Christ Acts chapter 10 and verse 43 again Peter is preaching and look at this wonderful verse of scripture Acts 10 and verse 43 of him all the prophets bear witness that through his name everyone who believes in him receives the forgiveness of sins through his name say together with me through his name what is his name what does it mean he removes the sins of his people and the bible here wonderfully says through his name through his name you know, everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins. And let me encourage you this morning. How many of you know that your sins have been forgiven? You know, when you are about to take water baptism, for example, uh, these are the questions they were, the pastor would ask. You know, do you know the Lord Jesus as your personal savior? Yes. And then they will say, do you know, do we have the assurance that all your sins have been forgiven? And uh, you have to say, not that you have to say, I hope you are able to understand. One person got, uh, was about to be baptized and uh, the person who instructed them just said, whatever the pastor says, just say yes. You know, and uh, say, have you accepted Christ? Yes. Have you, do you know that all your sins are forgiven? Yes. If things get hard, will you go back? Yes. <laughs> and only then the pastor said, you know, you know, <laughs> you will hold on to him, you know, or rather he will hold on to you. That, that's, more, that's more powerful. But the point is, do we have the assurance that our sins are forgiven? In a, in a sense, especially when we are in church, we have this assurance that our sins are forgiven. When we are on our own and all these old things, they come back to our mind. You know, things that you have done 20 years ago, 10 years ago, or whatever that might be. You know, and in a sense, you know that your sins have been forgiven. But when these thoughts, they come back to you, you again, in a sense, relive the experience and you are filled with guilt once again. Is that not true? Am I making any sense this morning? You know, all these things, they come back. I know my sins are forgiven, but when I am reminded, you know, suddenly it comes to my mind. You know, and I begin to relive the experience and I begin to feel guilty again. At that moment, what should I do? If guilt is not dealt with properly, it has got the power to drag you down six foot under. I hope you are able to understand what I am saying. Guilt has to be dealt with properly. Grief has to be dealt with properly. Grudge has to be dealt with properly. And all these three things can only be dealt with another G called grace. And we need to know what the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the grace of God will help you to deal with guilt. It will help you to deal with, with grief. It will help you to deal with grudge. And when it comes the grace of God and guilt, you know, yes, I do feel sorry for what I have done. But the grace of God reminds me again that on the cross of Calvary, my sin has already been dealt with. And the devil makes sure that you are often reminded of your past. You are often reminded of your failures. Often reminded of your shortcomings. It is at that moment you need to open your mouth and confess what Christ has done for your past sins. What Christ is doing now. What Christ is going to do in the future. And let me tell you theologically, it's very important. 
the penalty for sin has been dealt with on the cross the power over sin god has become our wisdom our strength and he will one day is going to come where we will be in a place where even the presence of sin is not going to be found that is going to be the ultimate kind of expression but even today not only forgiving our sins but giving us the power over sin which is very very important and the bible says that can only be found in one person and his name is called jesus, jesus. you know and you know for example uh, suddenly something comes to your mind that you we have done or you have done or i have done some years ago and my mind itself says ada paavi ipdi panitiye you know if you are if you are only used to english oh sinner you have done this Huh? are you with me ada paduva vi ipdi ellam pannirkiya not my neighbor is saying not anybody else is saying my own mind is saying eh ipdi pani ipdi pannama ni and when all those things come i begin to feel guilty again but at that particular moment the holy spirit reveals his truth reminds me of what christ has done yes i have done that yes i am not proud of it yes i felt shame about it but yes what i have done has been dealt with by christ on the cross of calvary i don't have to feel guilty about it but i can feel grateful for what christ has done for me on the cross when we don't say that when we don't believe what christ has done for us on the cross this guilt will you will relive it again and again and i a few weeks ago i did mention every time you relive it you pick up new points from the old episode i hope you are able to follow you will pick up new points you know you try to imagine try to relive the experience whatever you missed in your previous you know going through in your mind aspect you begin to pick points if you are the hurt person you know not the offended or the person who offended but the person who was offended then again the pain is much more greater and let me encourage you this morning he carried my sorrow he carried my pain he carried my grief and he did not carry it in vain he has dealt with it on the cross of calvary so that as he lives i can live also but this experience is made yours only when you have a relationship with him and when his name is on your mouth and what he has done has been a conviction in your heart and out of the fullness of the heart the mouth begins to speak and let me encourage you the devil will do a very good job of constantly reminding you of your past and of your past failures but be prepared to open your mouth and confess what Christ has done for you what Christ has accomplished on the cross for you he is not a dead person he is a living savior and he says i have i will keep my eye upon you and i will counsel you i will never leave you and never forsake you when the enemy comes in like a flood the spirit of the lord will raise up a standard if god is for me come on come on who can be against me and all these wonderful truths the lord begins to bring it into our hearts all because of simple one foundational principle we have a relationship with the one who has dealt with our sin on the cross of calvary he rose again from the dead he lives with us forever and one day is going to come we are going to live with him forever and ever and ever as i told you not only the forgiveness of sin the bible says come with me to acts chapter 3 and verse 27 again very powerful verses of scripture uh, the bible says in acts 3 and verse 27 and let me uh, read it for you the bible says for uh, verse 26 for you for you first god raised up his servant and sent him to bless you by turning every one of you from your wickedness i hope you are able to um uh, to to see the emphasis on that particular verse of scripture god raised up his servant his son 
and sent him to bless you. You know, sent him to bless you. How is he going to bless you? The very next verse, verses of words of, of the scripture by turning every one of you from your from your iniquities, from your wicked ways. So the thrust of that particular verse is this. Not only forgiveness of sins, but what will happen if the sins that are forgiven comes back to haunt me, comes back to get hold of me again, comes back to overtake me in my life. The Bible says, not only does he offer forgiveness, but he lives inside of you so that when those things that are forgiven comes back to bring you down, the one who has overcome is now living inside of you. And that is why he is called the Redeemer. I have said it many, many times. You know, in Tamil it comes out much more easier and easier for us to understand. Meetper. Who is a Meetper? Meetper. Elimiyaga Sulla Vendaman Sunnal. Mati Kundavargalai Meetkaravar. Meetka Pattavargal Mati Kullamal Partha Kullavar. That is, that is how simply I can put it across. You know, Mati Kundavargalai Meetka Vendam. Meetka Pattavargal. And that is why the Bible says, again, Tamil verses come to my mind, Meet Kapattavargal Anandam Padi, Siyonakadan Varvargal, Nithya Magalchi, Avargal Thalai Melirukum, Sanjalamam Tavipum, Odipo. I hope you are able to follow. And the Bible says, the name that offers forgiveness from our sins is the same name that gives us the power over sin. Because the one who has, the, has that name he has shed his blood to atone for our sin, rose again from the dead. And the Bible says, thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's all say those words together this morning. Thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 is very important. I want you to go back, take time after you have eaten your biryani and, and read through 1 Corinthians 15 and Paul lists a big, uh, big uh, issues why uh, resurrection is very important. Why our faith has only value only when it is get connected to Christ himself. And towards the end of it, he talks about how our, our own you know, death has to be seen in the light of the death and resurrection of Jesus. And then he finally he comes and let me read it for you. Nothing can replace scriptural language. Therefore, I'm going to read it for you. 1 Corinthians 15 and the last few verses of scripture, verse 55. You know, uh, let, me, let me read and I encourage you to, if you want, you can read along this morning. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law. Now let's all uh, read verse 57 together. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, let me say it in Tamil, which is, I like to say things in Tamil. Maraname un kurenge. Maraname un kurenge. Padalame unudi jayamenge. Maranatin kur pavam. Pavatin bela nyaya pramanam. Now I want you to feel the emphasis. Namodi ya kartaraki yesu kristavinale. Namaku jayam kudukra devanaki. Sotra mundavada. I want all of us to say it again. Namodiya is not somebody else's. Yenodiya kartaraki yesu kristavinale. Yenaki jayam kudukra devanaki. Who is he to give me victory? He is the one who is victorious. And that is why we can boldly say, Urimai parati solalam, uravirpadin valaivahe. My God, you know, He is my God, He is my Lord, He is my Savior. And through Him, we have the victory in Jesus Christ. And let me encourage you this morning. Victory has another name. It is called, I think we sing a song. Healing has a name. It's called Jesus. Salvation has got a name. It's called Jesus. Victory has got a name. His name is called Jesus. And that is why we sing songs, I trade my sorrows. What is trading our sorrows? We give it to him and we receive what belongs to him. 
I give him my sorrow, he gives, him, he gives me his joy. I give him my sin, he gives me his righteousness. I give him my curse, he has become a curse on the cross so that we can become a blessing. You know, the Bible says, For we know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Though he was rich, yet he became poor, so that through his poverty we might become rich. And let's all say this in Tamil, Nammudiya kartaragiye, Yesu Christu vinale. Namakki jayam kudukkara devanukki. Hallelujah. Let's all stand as we worship the Lord together. Praise God. What a, what a wonderful name. What a wonderful name. What a beautiful name Jesus is. Let's all stand. I pray that God will take us deeper in our knowledge, in our relationship with God. Let all fear be dispelled because of what Christ has done on the cross for each one of us. Oh, what a wonderful Savior. What a wonderful name is the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We're going to sing, sing a Tamil song, but it's very powerful. And I want, if possible, all of us to sing together with us this morning. Our name is Madhura Made. Our name is Sugamunde. Our name is Our name is that we belong to him he belongs to us and whatever he has done on the cross of Calvary he has done it for me and whatever he has accomplished on the cross he has accomplished for me and he rose again from the dead so that he will appropriate what he has accomplished on the cross through his death by his living in me and living through me what a wonderful privilege it is for us to worship a risen savior may the name of jesus be constantly be in our mouth there is power in the name of jesus there is healing in the name of jesus there is victory in the name of jesus there is deliverance in the name of jesus fears will be expelled at the mention of the name of jesus let's lift our hands and shout jesus oh hallelujah Lord, we thank you for such an awesome, powerful name. And we are reminded this morning, what a great love that the Father has lavished upon us, that we should be called by his name as children, sons and daughters of the Almighty God. I declare your blessing to be upon your people. It's in Jesus' name, God's people say, May the grace of our Lord Jesus, the love of God, the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. 
all God's people say amen and amen god be with you and god bless you yesu yeah.